One of the most common plot holes in the prequels is Obi-Wan cutting down Anakin and then leaving before he knew Anakin was truly dead. Now of course Anakin had to lose and had to end up in the Darth Vader suit, so this is how it had to happen. But what if I told you there was a legitimate reason that Obi-Wan left him there and it's actually explained very well in the novelization of Revenge of the Sith. We're going to get into it right now, and it gets more interesting the more I read, so stick around until the end. It's very fun, it's really interesting, it's, you know, gives a good explanation to a so-called plot hole, if you will. So yeah, stick around, but first of all, a couple things. New microphone. Let me know, do I sound any better? I hope so. I probably do, I was not using a good one before. Anyways, that, and also I'm going to be streaming much more. Streaming games, streaming news, planning to just do much more of that so stop by the streams we have a couple regular visitors when i do play games it's a ton of fun gonna be doing that much more so stop by it's a lot of fun all right let's get into the book obi-wan fighting anakin reveals his thoughts cutting him down and why he was able to just leave him there burning all right here we go this was not sith against jedi this was not light against dark or good against evil it had nothing to do with duty or philosophy, religion or morals. This was Anakin versus Obi-Wan, personally. Just the two of them, and the damage they had done to each other. Obi-Wan backflipped from the conduit to a coupling nexus of the main collection plant when Anakin flew in pursuit. Obi-Wan leapt again. They spun, they whirled throughout the levels, up its stairs and across its platforms. They battled out onto the collection panels over which the cascades of lava poured, and Obi-Wan, out on the edge of the collection panel, hunched under a curve of durasteel that splashed aside gouts of lava, deflecting force blasts and countering strikes from this creature of rage that had been his best friend. Suddenly, he comprehended an unexpectedly profound truth. The man Obi-Wan faced was everything that he had devoted his life to destroying. Murderer. Traitor. Fallen Jedi, Lord of the Sith. And here and now, despite it all, Obi-Wan still loved him. Yoda had said, he'd said it flat out, allow such attachments to pass out of one's life, a Jedi must. But Obi-Wan had never let himself understand. He had argued for Anakin, made excuses, covered for him again and again and again. All the while, this attachment that he denied, that he denied even feeling, had blinded him to the dark path that his best friend walked. Obi-Wan knew there was now only one answer in the end, one answer for this attachment. So, he let it go. And he fought Anakin, and Anakin said to him, This is the end for you, my master. I wish it were otherwise. Yes, Anakin. So do I, Obi-Wan said, as he sprinted and leapt up, making a spear of his blade. Anakin leaned aside and deflected the thrust almost easily. He missed a cut at Obi-Wan's legs as the Jedi Master flew past him. Obi-Wan turned his dive into a forward roll that left him teetering on the rim of a low cliff, just above the soft black sand of the riverbank. Anakin snarled a curse as he realized he'd been suckered, and he leapt off his droid, headed for Obi-Wan's back. But he was half a second too slow. Obi-Wan's whirl to parry. It didn't meet Anakin's blade. It met his knee, then his other knee. And while Anakin was still in the air, burned off lower legs only starting to topple down off the cliff, Obi-Wan's recovery to guard brought his blade through Anakin's left arm above the elbow. He stepped back as Anakin fell. Anakin dropped his saber, clawing at the edge of the cliff with his mechanical hand, but his grip was too powerful for the lava bank and it crumbled. He slid down onto the black sand, his severed legs, severed arm rolled into the lava below him and burned to ash in sudden bursts of flame. The same color, Obi-Wan observed distantly, as a Sith blade. Anakin scrapped at the soft black sand, but struggling only made him slip further. The sand itself was hot enough that the digging his durasteel fingers burned off his glove and his robes began to smolder. Obi-Wan picked up Anakin's lightsaber. He lifted his own as well, weighing them in his hands. Anakin had based his design upon Obi-Wan's. So similar they were. So differently they had been used. Obi-Wan, Anakin said. And Obi-Wan looked down. Flame licked the frames of Anakin's robe. 
and his long hair had been blackened. It was beginning to char. And Obi-Wan yelled, You were the chosen one! It was said you would destroy the Sith, not join them. It was you who would bring balance to the Force, not leave it in darkness. You were my brother, Anakin, said Obi-Wan. I loved you, but I could not save you. A flash of metal through the sky, and Obi-Wan felt the darkness closing in around them both. He knew that ship, the Chancellor's shuttle. Now, he supposed, the Emperor's shuttle. Yoda had failed, he knew. He might have died. He might have left Obi-Wan alone, the last Jedi. Below his feet, Darth Vader burst into flame. I hate you, he screamed, and Obi-Wan looked down. It would be mercy to kill him. He was not feeling merciful. He was feeling calm and clear, and he knew that to climb down to the black might cost him more time than he had. Another Sith Lord approached, and in the end there was only one choice. It was a choice he had made many years before when he had passed the trials of Jedi knighthood and swore himself to the Jedi forever. In the end, he was still Obi-Wan Kenobi. He was still a Jedi, and he would not murder a helpless man. He would leave it to the will of the Force. He turned, and he walked away. After a moment, he began to run. He began to run because he realized, if he was fast enough, there was one thing he could still do for Anakin. He still could do honor to the memory of the man that he loved, and to the vanished order they both had served. At the landing deck, 3PO stood at the skiff's landing, waving frantically. Master Kenobi, please hurry. Where's Padme? Kenobi asked. Already inside, sir, but she is badly hurt, 3PO responded. Obi-Wan ran up the ramp, and he then found Padme up there. As the Chancellor's shuttle landed, Obi-Wan never looked back. So that's the end of the passage, mostly inside of what Kenobi was thinking. This was, truly, the worst moment of his life. Everything he knew and loved imploded from the inside because of the student he trained. The student he loved, loved like a brother. So, it's the worst moment ever, and when all seemed lost, he was able to do what he'd been trained to do for his entire life as a Jedi, let go. So he did, and when Anakin leapt, Kenobi delivered the decisive blow, though I'm not sure he intended to actually cut Anakin up. The book mentions he went for a parry, but in the movie it seems like a much more calculated, aggressive swing, so interpret that as you will. But as Anakin laid there, Kenobi debates going to kill him once and for all. But instead of not doing it because he's unable to, he leaves him because killing him is too merciful. Also, because he is still Obi-Wan, and he's not going to kill a helpless man. The line I read where Obi-Wan realizes Anakin is everything both of them spent their lives trying to destroy is so good. He realizes Anakin is a traitor, murderer, Sith Lord. He realizes that he's not even Anakin any longer. So Obi-Wan lets him burn as he senses Darth Sidious arrive, leaving it up to the will of the Force. So that's today's video. Let me know what you thought. Let me know what you thought of this passage. Let me know what you thought about Obi-Wan leaving Anakin. Do you see it in a new light now? Let me know. And yeah, let me know what you think about the new mic, if it sounds any better. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.